What is Agile? Having worked for over 25 years in IT, for most of it in Agile spaces, either as a developer myself or as a coach in Agility, I am not surprised to see that the question of what's Agile is still out there these days with battles happening, with ideology in the internet, and with companies spending millions of dollars in Agile transformations without collecting the proportional benefits. To answer the question of what is Agile, I would add another one to the mix, which is what problems does Agile solve anyway? And I hope a combined answer will give you a better perspective, whether you're just curious or you are a coach or a leader trying to figure out how to best position yourself out there in the market. I tried to keep this video simple, but not trivial. In any case, know that I also wrote a blog post, more detail, a little bit juicier. If you like details or a broader perspective, the link is in the description down below, so go check it out. Introductions done and out of the way, let's get into the core of the video. What is Agile? I define it this way. Agile is an approach that proposes that you work effectively, intelligently, and adaptively. In other words, generate results, working on the problem worth solving. Deal with change early and gracefully and actively manage the work process and the quality of what is produced. Now, how did we get to this definition that I use? The journey of Agile origins starts obviously with a historical background and the context that 90% of the chance that you heard about the Agile Manifesto for Software Development, a document that was created by 17, uh, 16 of them being software developers, one being more like a project manager in the development software development field. It was in 2001, and they wanted to find a better way of developing great software. The manifesto started out as four values and 12 principles that defined the Agile approach, but it didn't actually start there. It's important to know these ideas were already brewing across a global community. And those guys, what they did is that they codified what agility was being considered to be. And we'll talk a little bit more about what inspired them later. But it's worth knowing Agile did not end with the manifesto either. To this day, Agile is evolving as new frameworks, new methods and practices are being developed and adapted to many different industries and domains and contexts. The manifesto is not a fixed or final in statement in all matters of agility. And in fact, most people ignore the part where it invites continuous discovery and exploration as they say, we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and by helping others do it. One, it's not done. It continues to happen. We are still uncovering best practices and those are created from well, you guessed, practices that arise and then they are tested and they are refined when and if they work. And two, being on the trenches. We are doing and we are helping others do it. So you see, one of the issues that happen a lot in the Agile space is that many people seem to want to be able to coach and support Agile teams, but they are not themselves actual Agile practitioners. So no wonder they struggle to help others do it as they themselves don't have lived in experience. In fact, Martin Fowler himself mentioned in his blog over 15 years ago, he said, People using Scrum as an excuse to forego the good engineering practices necessary to create software products of great quality. It's not a fault of Scrum, but somehow it seemed to appeal to people who just wanted to escape the need to talk about great management practices and great software development practices. Agile has been evolving and even initiatives such as Modern Agile, which places a great emphasis on fast product discovery and better ways of collaborating, and Heart of Agile, which was a brainchild of another contributor of the manifesto, Alastair Cockburn, which this one places the emphasis on the learning part of agility. And even new frameworks, if you think about it, they keep appearing every day. The important message in here is Agile was born out of the need to address challenges and opportunities of the modern organizations where technology, business, and customer expectations are changing rapidly. Agile, or gaining agility, if you will, is a way of addressing these three dimensions together. So far, so good? Okay, so what problem does Agile solve today anyway? 
Is your project late? Are people being injected into the team in order to make the project less late? Is the quality of your product suffering? Is the level of technical debt rising? Did you discover that your project is not going to meet the deadline three days before the deadline or six months before it? Do people keep asking you to add new features and new things and bells and whistles into your product? Is your team depending on another team and your dates for delivery and for things to being integrated do not align? You had all that pressure to deliver this project. Now it is delivered and nobody cares. Do you have more documentation done than actual features being developed? These are a temporal issues that Agile comes to solve. The use of Agile approaches enables you to deliver value faster by reducing the time to market, increasing the frequency of delivery, and minimizing the waste and the overhead. Deliver value better by improving the quality, reliability, and usability of your solutions, and by maximizing the customer satisfaction and loyalty. Deliver value cheaper, yes, by optimizing the use of economical resources, reducing the cost of development and maintenance, and by increasing in some way the return of investment and the profitability. And delivering value that matters by solving real customer problems, only the ones they are ready to pay for, meeting the customer needs and their expectations, and if you will, creating a positive social uh, environmental impact. These are very real and timeless business problems. And the interesting thing in the current state of Agile, in my opinion, is that seeing the over-reliance in frameworks that are well, not helpful enough in any of that, as if, you know, they, they are really overly focused in rituals and in roles. And we know that managing project and delivering software is way more than that. But there is something else that isn't helpful. It's the lack of insights in action on actual aspects of managing the work as it progresses. There doesn't really need to be, doesn't really seem to be much talked about in Agile these days. Um, you know, the, the quality of the technical solution and the speed and adaptability as a business capability. With the rise of these frameworks in roles such as Scrum Masters, interesting enough, it became a sin to proactively manage the work. So here I will recruit the help of Uncle Bob, a great Agilist and also another signatory of the manifesto who taught me that what Agile does is that it basically destroys management by hope. Yeah, you heard me right. Stop with this thing where somebody hopes that things will turn out fine. The power of this assertion by Uncle Bob is, is the reminder that when you hope for things to go well, you stop any intelligent control in your project. Always be managing your project. Never hope things are going well enough. Never hope for improvement. Look at the data, which should be produced as your iteration or learning cycles go on. If you don't have that, you're not running iterations. Use that data and act. Intervene in an informed way. Kill all hope. Use your data. Agile done right without hope and with intelligent control will look like this. It will enhance project predictability and on-time delivery. It will facilitate the early detection and correction of mistakes. It will foster a customer-centric approach for sustained value delivery. It will promote a culture of continuous improvement and learning. It will streamline software development life cycles for efficiency. Yes, that's not a bad word. And it will as well prioritize human-to-human -human communication over bureaucratic processes and ensure that extreme levels of quality exist and that you have some optimization of organizational and technological architecture. So you'll be mitigating delays and losses and risks in project management in general. In conclusion, Agile is not woo-woo talk or fluff as some make it sound sometimes. It is also not this generic feel good team building either. Agile to work has a strong focus on synchronization, data, action, producing results and managing the processes that lead to them. Now, remember when I say the inspiration came from somewhere? Well, 
influenced by system thinking, QE theory, lean principles, and various other management sciences, Agile is an approach that guides organizations in executing work efficiently and effectively. It emphasizes the importance of working on things worth doing, maintaining an optimal pace, and utilizing resources wisely. You might be wondering, well, then how can I bring this agility to my organization if Agile is not just using the frameworks? And the answer is you need to tailor your approach to your context and goals, but tailor what? You must know the key patterns to look for so that you can then pull the levers, if you will, the levers that will make a difference. And these levers are like a piece in the model that I myself used to teach and coach in Agile, which I call simple Agile. And it is working on the right thing, working on that thing right, shipping fast and continuously learning. I will introduce you to that in the upcoming video on Simple Agile. You will be able to see it here when it's ready. But meanwhile, there are a few things that you can look into in the other videos. If you are not a great coach, if you are not a great facilitator, Take a look at the playlist that I have here because these are skills that will need to be combined for you to generate any worthwhile uh, positive impact in your clients or in your teams. So that's my answer to what is Agile, what problem does it solve? And as always, I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching to the end and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.